Too many drivers and some big names from the real racing world claim the slow in and fast out is the best concept for fast lap times, but that is not entirely true. On the first three episodes, we learn how important is the exit of the corner, how to identify the perfect apex for each corner using the different physical marks on the road and how to discipline our mind and strictly follow the chosen racing line even if we can take more from some part of the corner depending on what is coming next. And now it's time to put those pieces together and create a proper concept in our mind and start working on actual driving techniques and take the maximum of that concept. Forget about the slow in and fast out. Every corner is different and depends on many different factors. First rule, identify the perfect apex for each corner. Second rule, reach that specific point of the corner as fast as possible, creating the best possible position of the car for smooth and fast exit with those three driving techniques. The first is the trial brake. To understand the concept of trail braking, first we have to agree in this. If we take two identical cars with identical setups to certain corner, the amount of available grip will be absolutely equal. But how the hell some drivers go so much faster and looks like they magically create some extra grip? Let's take the car through that left corner and try to understand all the different forces. Breaking down on a straight, we transfer most of the available grip equally on the front tires. Once we start turning to the left, most of the forces move to the front right side, but at the same moment we create extra lateral forces. But in this moment, mostly on single tire and we have to release some of the braking forces and try to stay on the limit of the available grip. At the same time, the rear end of the car is very light and we have to distribute some of the weight transfer to the rear part of the car again with releasing the braking inputs. Basically, the trail braking technique is braking Breaking as deep as we can into the corner and releasing the braking inputs in a way that we stay on the limits of the available grip, distributing the weight of the car from to rear while decreasing the speed and we use it mostly for slow and long corners. Now you will say thank you very much fuckface, I already do that but I am still far from the world records. And you are right. The problem is you use it too perfectly and you don't create that important slip angle. Can you think for the car as your dance partner and really try to connect? What if we have the same approach but this time we release the brake in a way where the rear end start losing the grip just a little bit? and let the car rotate better around the corner. We will sacrifice tiny bit on the entry, but we will create much better position for the exit. And you remember from episode 1, with better exit, we easily gain a tenth till the next braking point. Imagine if on the edge of the corner my car have that position, but your car have that position. That will make huge difference for the exit of that corners for those two cars. If you want to become from fast to really fast driver, you really have to understand and learn how to create that slip angle. That is like you are cheating on the perfect racing line with your rear end. Try to let most of the available grip on the front and let the rear end a little bit loose so that way the car rotate better around the corner. Remember, that is not drifting, but just a little rear end placement. And when you combine that slip angle with that momentum, you will have all the ingredients you need to set a world record. If you follow this channel, you have definitely seen me doing some really fast corrections on the edge of the apex and the exit. That is me giving my best to keep that famous momentum everyone talks about after coming into that corner with proper slip angle. The reason of those corrections is to keep the grip on the rear taking off some of the literal forces giving opposite steering input. There is no drift involved in this, I try to keep the front end firmly in while the rear have little different line and keep accelerating out of the corner. But still, what is that momentum? That is the moment where we have to use that peak of the grip 
and start accelerating and keep the momentum and the speed out of the corner. Quick recap, let's put everything back together. Slow in and fast out, very confusing tip for many people out there, forget about it. First rule, we need a vision for the perfect apex for each corner. Second, we break as late as possible relative to the apex we already choose, not to the corner. Third, if we use trail braking for specific corner, we let the rear end little loose and rotate better for the best possible exit position. Fourth, we create that slip angle relative to the apex because we need that maximum momentum and maximum available grip on the edge of the apex and use it to carry on the speed and get out of the corner. I don't care who you are or for how long you are in the sim or real racing sport. If you don't create a proper concept in your mind and combine all those pieces together, you will never see yourself on top. Trust me or not, everyone out there have the potential, but not many are willing to put the hard work and reach the top. To polish those skills, it can take years, but already the half of the people click off from that video. Some of them thinking they know better and others see it as too much work and find no reason to become better and spend their precious time. How pathetic. I don't believe there is anyone out there who really wants to be mediocre in something he really loves. Today can be driving, but tomorrow something much more important. Why you will not want to push yourself and get better in things you really love and care? We are such a rare configuration of atoms in that universe with such a huge potential, but we waste our time in things we don't even care. Why we don't use our very limited time for things we really love and care and forget what other people think? Because the last thing we want when the time arrives is to think we've wasted our life.